Hello, welcome everybody. My name is uh, Diego Vega, uh, and I work for Microsoft. I have been working at Microsoft for 10 years, more or less. I joined Microsoft to work on a team called Data Programmability that was all about connectivity with databases. And since I joined, one thing I learned was one of our main uh, partners was also one of our competitors, that is Oracle. And and it was great to work with those guys to try to address some of the needs of our mutual customers. Then it was, Microsoft was different than .NET, that was the particular environment where I worked was very different. We were focused on Windows and .NET Framework 3.5 only work on Windows, so we only care about that. Uh, things have changed a lot, and we have created uh, .NET Core, we, we have uh, gone to a open source and to become a cross-platform uh, environment, I mean, and productivity, developer productivity platform. And guess who we met in the neighborhood? We, we found that Oracle was already there on Linux, and it was there in the cloud, either our cloud or their cloud. And many customers wanted to use .NET Core with Oracle as well. And it took some time, but we have been working together on trying to make that happen. So I want to welcome uh, Christian Shea that came all the way from San Francisco to talk to you guys and show you. Way. Yeah, all the way. It's very <laughs> far, right? But he had to deal with some problems in the airport, apparently. Oh, I'm sure everyone did, right? Yeah, so um, he's going to just show what they have been working on. All right. Do I run this then? I think you have that safe harbor statement. Oh, yeah, whoops. Right? OK. Thank you, Diego. Uh, right, so I'm Christian Shea. I'm one of the product managers for .NET at Oracle. And so uh, as Diego was saying, uh, we've been working together, both of our companies, for a long, long time to try to help uh, .NET developers who are using Oracle. So how many of you are currently using Oracle Database in your day-to-day -day work? OK, you're in the right place. So today we're going to try to tell you what's coming. I'll do a demo of what we have in in pre-release. I guess that's a warning not to talk too loud. And, uh, and we'll go from there. I got a little demo to show you, and we'll see what happens. So um, <clears throat> so starting from way back when Microsoft uh, introduced .NET back in 2000-ish, uh, uh, we started providing a, a data provider for .NET. Uh, that's our Oracle Managed Data Access up on NuGet. That's our full uh, uh, framework uh, provider production that's been around forever. And then also Visual Studio integration, so things like um, uh, using Entity Designer and, and Table Adapter Configuration Wizard, and also generating SQL scripts and PL SQL debugging and all that is part of our Visual Studio tools. You can get that on the Visual Studio Marketplace. And then uh, I have to mention the Oracle Cloud because we're, we're uh, including support for .NET Core in the Application Container Cloud service now. So if you get a chance to check that out. And finally, um, if you're going to write anything down or type anything down or check the slides later, uh, that's uh, otn.oracle.com slash .NET is our landing page for all .NET developers. That's where you can go to download stuff if you're not going to get it from NuGet. Uh, and also, uh, that's where we put our latest news. We have a bunch of walkthroughs. We have a really vibrant uh, community forum on there. Uh, and uh, videos and stuff like that. So now let's move into the, the topic of the day, Oracle Data Provider for .NET Core. So this is currently in pre-release, um, but you can try it out right now, and I'm going to demo it. Um, you just need to go to NuGet. It's Oracle Managed Data Access Core. And all you have to do is just make sure you check off that pre-release box in NuGet to make sure that you see it. Uh, go ahead and download it from there. Now, if you're already using the full, uh, the, the regular Oracle managed provider for the full framework, uh, you'll notice that we're using the same DLL name. We're also using the same assembly, uh, sorry, the same namespace, uh, the same APIs to some degree. I mean, there's some things that are not supported, but you'll learn about that. And then uh, as the full uh, framework provider. So what that means is you can, quite easily migrate what you already have to .NET Core, as long as you don't step on a few of the things that are not supported either by us or by uh, .NET Core itself. 
Um, and right now, uh, as far as networking configuration, everyone's favorite topic, uh, we do support sequelnet.ora and tnsnames.ora. Um, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Um, and you can do that either by moving files or by using the TNS admin environment variable to do it. But we have news on that front about configuration uh, when we talk about future features. All right, so now's when I get to stare at my screen. Uh, let's switch over, okay, to the, oh, I need to do it, okay. All right, so I have a Zoom tool or something, so don't fret too much if that's hard to read. Um, but let's just go ahead and start up a new uh, .NET uh, console app here. We'll call it uh, MS Build. And let me put it in my um, MS Build folder so I can find it. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is to, uh, is to go to NuGet and get this thing. So let me come over here to Solution Explorer and open up NuGet. And I'll show you where you can get it. Hopefully the networking is cooperating. Okay, so type in Oracle. That's what I always do anyway. So these are our, these are the. Oh, whoops. Let me uh, see if I can get a little bit more room here. Okay, so these are the um, the the, the provider. This is the provider that's for the uh, full framework. And then um, if you scroll down, notice that I've checked off uh, the include pre-release. Tick box. If you scroll down, you'll find. Whoops. If you scroll, there we go. You will find the Oracle Managed Data Access Core. So that's really all you need. And go ahead and install that into your project. Right now, there's no release notes, but let me show you something. Uh, let me come in here. And uh, let me, oh, I know. Let me look in my new Git folder where this stuff gets installed. OK, don't do that. So when this thing gets installed it, by new Git, um, we don't, in the, nor in the normal release, we actually put this much more visible location. But I wanted to point this out to you right here. Uh, new Git installs these release notes. And this is actually very important because it has a list of uh, what's supported and what's not supported um, in terms of uh, features and things like that. So um, come on in here and take a look at this and, uh, and just make sure you read through it when you're, when you're done installing it. Okay, so let me, um, uh, I don't even remember if I actually installed it or not. Let me check. Yes, I did, okay. So let me close this window. Now, um, I need a little sample app, so what I did was we have a nice uh, GitHub. I call it nice. You might call it re boring, but, but in any case, um, you can go down to the bottom of our, that, that, that link that I sent you, our .NET Developer Center. You can go down to the bottom of it and click the GitHub icon to find, find it a little bit easier. And then in here, I have sessions for 2018 MS Build, data set. This is just a simple little, um, simple little piece of code, but let me, just, let me just copy it here. But this way you can follow along if you feel like it. All right, so here we go. So uh, the other thing you may notice is that we're using uh, uh, that namespace there, using a ma Oracle Managed Data Access Client. And then that's really all there is to it as far as the code goes. Now, uh, let's just build and run it to prove that it works. Okay, and run it. Okay, so yeah, it does work. Now let's take a look at what's going on in here in terms of the connection. So if you take a look here, um, right now what I'm using, and this might be easier for you in the first iteration is pre-release. Right now I'm using what we call an easy connect connect string. Uh, that just is where you explicitly say what the IP address or host name is, the port number the database is listening on, and the service name for the database. But uh, in the first uh, release, 
We also allow you to use tnsnames.org files, which is where your aliases are kept. Um, and you can see here that I'm, I'm just using this alias or CLPDB. And uh, I think, uh, I guess I don't have a easy, uh, let's see, do I have a copy of it around here somewhere? I think I do. Here it is. So you can see how it's defined inside of the tnsnames.org right here with the same kind of information. But in any case, you'll probably be in a situation where you need to uh, uh, use TNS aliases. So what you can do then is you can take this file and you can copy it into the root or into the, uh, let's see here, uh, what did I call it, MS build. So. I can copy it in here, and now this should just run. It should pick up the TNS names and it should just run. So this will get you through until the next time we do a release or the, the next production release when we support configuration. So um, the only last thing I wanted to show you while I'm in here is just, remember I was talking about the Visual Studio tools? Uh, this, is the, this is what they look like. So if you install Oracle Developer Tools for Visual Studio, you get, the, you get that Server Explorer integration and, and all the good stuff. So you should probably make sure you install that too when you're playing with this. OK, so I think that's my demo. Let's go back to the slides. Oh, I have to do it. Sorry. OK. So let's talk about what's coming up here. So that you saw the, um, and if you want to say anything, you feel free to jump in. But, sure. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so what you just witnessed was the pre-release. So you noticed a few things about that. Uh, number one, um, I'm not showing Entity Framework Core. So here I am at an Entity Framework uh, with, with the king of Entity Framework here. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, and we're not showing it, so it, it's actually not included yet. So that's uh, going to be coming by the end of this year. Um, and if you are interested in beta testing this, you might want to write down this guy's email, alex, A-L-E-X dot K, K-E-Y, K-E-H, K-E-H, at oracle.com. So he is uh, going to be running the beta for that. And I would highly recommend, if, you, if you're really interested in this, that you send him an email and he'll include you in a list of a private beta earlier than the end of the year. Uh, and then as far as the production release of uh, the Oracle Data Provider for .NET Core, so um, we're expecting that in the third quarter of this year. So that's coming right up, really. And so a couple of the things that we'll be doing is we'll make sure to include almost all features of, this, of the full framework ODP.NET. Uh, right now, we're missing some, and we document that in that, in that document you saw. And um, also, we'll include API uh, configuration support. So what that means is you'll have some uh, APIs and classes you can create uh, to basically do things like set up connection aliases, uh, configure tracing, configure um, just basically anything that goes inside of your app configure web config right now. Uh, that doesn't really exist in the .NET Core world uh, config files, so it's up to you. I think that's because there, you, you could be in lots of different environments that have different ways of handling configurations. So it's up to you to, to programmatically set that up. And uh, that's a work in progress, and we're doing everything we can to make that as easy as possible for you guys. Um, so uh, that's what else is going to be in there. So that's third quarter of 2018. Do you want to add anything to that? Or? No, sounds, okay. sounds great. All right. How are we doing on time? Not bad at all. OK, so <clears throat> um, these are some bit.ly links, because the links themselves are definitely not copyable. They're very long. So we have um, a really great ODP.NET forum. Uh, it's very, very active, and it has uh, questions and answers going back for 10, 15 years. So if you can think about a question, uh, you can probably already find an answer in there. Um, 
I'm also on Stack Overflow quite a bit, so you might see me on there. Um, but a lot of times I'll send people here because there's so much great stuff in there. And also we have a feature request page. This is for bigger features or just things we haven't implemented yet. If you want to vote on them, you can come in here because uh, sometimes we have to prioritize and it helps us prioritize. And that's the feature request page. So uh, I think we're at the Q&A at this point. Yep. So questions from the audience. Did anyone get stuck at the airport? Yep. <laughs> you have a question? Do we have any options between now and the end of 18 if we want to use the and Okay. So the question is uh, if we have any options before the end of uh, 2018 if we want to use uh, Oracle, you say with .NET Core or with DF Core? So I, I'll let uh, Christian. Well, the, yeah, you want to take down this guy's name here uh, because I think much earlier than the end of the year, he's going to have something you can try, and that'll get you going, and you can learn how to, you can learn uh, not only that, but possibly, um, yeah, new features that we might be adding will be included. So probably I would, if you're really interested in getting as early of a view of it as possible, I would send him an email and say he'd like to be put on the beta list. Yeah. Other than there, that. Um, there's also, yeah, I, can, I can say this. Maybe you cannot say it, but <laughs> there is a third-party commercial provider for EF Core for Oracle. Uh, I haven't tried it. I cannot say that it's good or bad. Uh, but if you want to try it, if it works for you and you want to pay for it, it doesn't come from Oracle or Microsoft, so you have to exercise your trust. Yeah. But uh, it exists. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some major uh, third-party vendors out there who are doing this for, for a fee. So. Anybody else? Hi. What's the performance like compared to .NET Framework version? Uh, performance. Well, we're a little bit early. I don't think yeah, we've done performance right. metrics, but uh, you know, as you know, .NET Core really blazes, right? It's designed to be very fast. So uh, I see no reason why we won't, why it won't be. Yeah. Um, plus, we're reusing a lot of the code already, so. Um, if we if we weren't reusing a lot of the code, it would take us a lot longer. But but luckily, you know, and we've already had 10 to 15 years of bashing on the other provider and getting lots of feedback about performance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, this is basically fix it now. Yeah. Um, so. I, you're comparing with with ours, with a, the on the .NET framework. for the entity from yeah. the full framework. Yeah. yeah. So I don't see any reason why it would be in, any different and probably faster just because it's running on .NET Core. So yeah. one piece of uh, anecdotal information: when when you guys released the second beta of this provider, we we tried it. You know, we we have this uh, suite of tests for EF Core yeah. that we run against our sample provider for Oracle. That is a sample provider, it's not production, but we created a sample provider because we wanted to verify that we were not missing features in order to support Oracle. And it, it ran all the tests perfectly. It's like on the first oh, try, great. we switched to the .NET Core provider. It was working with the .NET Framework version of the provider, but it, it worked. It's, this oh, didn't cause wonderful. any problems. So That's wonderful to hear. So as you can tell, our groups are working very closely together. Uh, Diego is in direct contact with all of our uh, key engineers. So thank you very much for your help, Diego. <laughs> hey, thank you. Any more questions? OK. Thank you very much for coming.